My name is Helen Turek. And I'm Ari Danica. And this is Voices from the Void. And here we are in the news. We're going to start off with a news article that was actually featured on Eve News 24 last week. And it was the Goon Swarm Federation not coming to the South. New director's update. And we are touching on this story because I wanted to do a little digging, I wanted to do a little extra research. Once I did get a chance to read the article, there are a couple of things that I had questions about. The first was the Southern War, and I kind of wondered to myself, really, you know, did, did goons really snub AAA because of an old grudge? And they did. And the backstory to that is AAA betrayed Goons Form to Bob at one of their weakest points. And Red Overlord, their existence is tied in with that entire betrayal. So I found that really interesting that AAA would look to Goons for help and then uh, another good point was brought up that the goons would send as many fleets down to the south as AAA brought up to the north when they were getting invaded by the Russians. So, to be fair, you know, goons really didn't send a request out to AAA. But I was kind of interest, you know, I was I was kind of surprised to hear that AAA betrayed someone because you always speak so highly of them. Talent. Hey, at the let me tell let me say this to the goons that are saying they'll send as many fleets as the AAA is sent to the north. When the Northern Coalition was dying, AAA sent at least three fleets. So, come on, goons. But you didn't answer the thing about the betrayal with Bob. Yeah, I know. That was a politician's dodge. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. I see. Uh, I, okay, go ahead. See, I know, the, I know the story from goons' perspective, but it's from the goons' perspective. So, yeah. Come on, you're supposed to know these things about AAA. Well, you know, goons are always going to assume that if somebody goes against them that they're betraying them or some other bullshit. But really, seriously, just pay attention. It's a fight. This is Nullsec. This is Thunderdome. Uh, You can't see the expression I'm giving to you now, but it's... Let me tell you something. Let's, 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 Let's dial this whole thing back a bit. As far as I'm concerned, at this point, look at the map. Goons and Test, I would bet money have a non-invasion pact with the drone Russians. And Stain Empire, with their new neutrality in the war, I believe they may indeed also have a non-invasion pact with the drone Russians. That means AAA and Red Overlord are it. Well, that and the Thunderdome. <laughs> Which has actually been kind of quiet as far as I've seen, though I just moved there, so... I don't know. The other thing that I had a question about is <clears throat> that I asked about. Well, the other thing that I asked for clarification on from the from the Diplo team of the goons was Ritus. In the article, they stated that they were moving from a central sky marshal to to make it a more of a team effort. And Ritus did lead the campaign against the Russians in in the north, which was a very I can only imagine tiring campaign due to the infighting that was going on as well as, you know, trying to plan tactical strikes against an entity as the Russians. And it's just the fact that she needed a break and she needed downtime and, you know, it's a game treated like one. Because as anyone can read, her name was not mentioned in the in the FC leadership, though there wasn't at all, and that was my question. And so a big thank you to Avial Rat for taking the time to speak to me, and Indy, for, who writes these, what I could possibly consider some of the most entertaining content on Eve News 24. Once I sat down and read it, I kind of laughed a couple times, and it's just good reading. On to Delve. So yeah. I just moved to Delve. I have no idea what that's going on. It doesn't seem like there's much of a war effort. Most of the fleets that I've seen have been like... Good fights. You know, going to get... Yeah, going to get fights. Uh, there's been some, you know, we got to carry your tackle fleets and things like that. There have been some ops, uh, some stop structure ops and things like that. But from what I've seen, they've been few and far between. So things are, I guess, going well for the Thunderdome. <laughs> with the exception of Evoke downed an MM Titan. And this particular Titan pilot, this was the second time they have lost a Titan. They actually lost their first one in the battle that was held in Uimont a couple months ago. 
So he didn't and, want that tightening anyway. <laughs> probably not. And from what I understand, the story is Evo put a bait oracle into a system. Uh, MM and company hot dropped it, and were in return hot dropped themselves. And so there was a Titan lost along with an Archon and a couple other ships. At least they got a Rorqual, right? <laughs> Yay! Did they kill the Rorqual? I mean, they did. They did kill the Rorqual. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> it's pretty, pretty hard not to. I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> yeah. They so did that... kill that 1.4 billion is Rorqual, right? <laughs> they only lost a 60 billion, maybe 90 billion is ship in the return. I think that's a fair trade. Nice troll there, sir. <laughs> yes, indeed. Especially since a supercarrier could have done the same job. <laughs> hey, there's no kill like overkill. Just saying. There is no overkill. There is only open fire and a need to reload. And this is especially true for Titans. If you're leaving scorch marks, you need a bigger gun. Basically. But those that are doing drops right, goons, end up dropping on PL Dreads not once this week, but twice. And the first time around... Not not once, but twice. The first time was in Cloud Ring, while uh, about 20 PL Dreads were attacking a Black Mark Pass, a group of goons and company that had just finished uh, putting down an Evoke Tower, got the intel. And so they were able to quickly adjust their their plans got on a couple of titans and they ended up getting six out of the 18 dreads that were being used they were only able to get six because pl dropped uh 11 super carriers on them <laughs> in return well let me <laughs> let me say this about that uh, now now with the titan i was joking but when it comes to dreadnoughts they probably didn't want those anyway so no and and it's true and that's that's actually one of the comments that i have and even in the second one they lost another seven to a goon cane fleet but when you think about the financial power behind pl and you think about their pilots and how useless dreadnoughts are yeah <laughs> And then the fact that it's dreadnoughts, no one really cares. But it's so yeah. funny. But it's, it's, it's like the a principle ball. of the loss. It's the principle it's, of the loss. It is, it is. Losing a cat battle is losing a cat battle, but still. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yay, you dreads. killed a couple you killed some dreads. Woo. I think more I think PL is more pissed about all the shit talking going on on Kugu currently <laughs> than the actual loss of the dreadnoughts. Yeah. No more elite PvP, huh? And speaking of things done for the lols, Fatal Ascension was able to down an Agony Unleashed carrier with a frigate gang. Sounds Come like on. an Agony Unleashed PvP course for a second here. Come on. <laughs> really? And Wait. and it was it was Hold a flick like that. What? They killed a, I mean, I just really like to take a step back here. They killed a carrier with frigates. How many frigates did they lose? Uh, let's see here. The deal is Z uh, Zagdal had taken a frig fleet out, and they also had, um, it wasn't just a frig fleet, they also had, yeah, I'm actually pulling up the battle report right now. They actually had a Vaga, two recons, and some cruisers and battle battleships with them. Let's see, the curse, a couple of electronic... Oh, that Frigate. That curse. That curse was a very, very important piece of that at that pie. Now that I know the curse was there, that's that's that had to suck. Literally. <laughs> when you look at the losses, Agony took serious losses <laughs> against this frigate gang, and I'm not sure how. I don't. I don't understand. It's magic. It has to be. It has to be some kind of crazy space voodoo magic because wow, just wow. Ooh. Holy Christ! And and I will of course include this this in the link. I think this is almost as terrible as that uh, Navy issue Megatron with the miners on it and the billion dollar mod. I just it's like to say this kill board terrible. is terrible. <laughs> Throw that out there. Yeah, I'm not a fan wow. of the kill board. I'm, what is this shit? I don't even. <laughs> it's weird. It's but it's colorful. It has some colors on it. And things. But, yeah, but this is like I'm like trying to read it and like what is this? This is fucking shit. God damn it! What? Okay, let's see here. But it is low. It, it is a very low worthy battle battle report because 
<laughs> because F.A. really kicked Agony Empire's teeth in <laughs> with this freaking gang. So good job. Good job, Zagdol. Good job, F.A. This should go down in the in the annals of, of LOL. It really should. And I think that's it for... Ah, oh, there's the interdictors. I was... <laughs> I was looking for the interdictors because there's no way a fr- any number of frigates are going to be able to keep tackle on this thing for. Any oh yeah, time. oh yeah, yeah. They had they had their drams and they had their interdictors, but uh. <laughs> yeah, the interdictor warps in, drops his bubble, burns out of his bubble, and warps away before the carrier can even lock him. Good times. Or hell, if if he's smart, he can put a cloak on that thing. Just drop the bubble, move away, cloak. <laughs> and <he's>, <laughs> Wait. <laughs> And he's done. <laughs> Hero Dicker. My, bu- my bubble went down. No, you were good. My bubble went down. Ma, we're good. But that is it for Null Sec News. Moving on to CCP News only.